Google I.O. is done and so is Microsoft Build. That means Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference is the last big software showcase for a couple months and the company is clearly planning to make a splash. The keynote kicks off at 10 a.m. Pacific or 1 p.m. Eastern on June 7th. But if you just, you just can't wait to learn about what Apple is gearing up to show off this year, let's take a few minutes to walk through the stuff that we know is coming and some of the things that we hope make the cut. iOS got a pretty substantial revamp at last year's WWDC, and we're expecting it to get the lion's share of attention this year too. That said, many of the reports we've seen so far suggest we might be looking at an overall quieter year for iPhone software. For example, the juiciest detail we've seen so far comes from Bloomberg, which reported that Apple has revamped the way notifications will work in iOS 15. You will apparently be able to set an iPhone to deal with incoming notifications differently depending on what you're doing, say, driving versus sleeping or working. Bloomberg also suggests that iOS 15 can be set to automatically respond to messages depending on which of those statuses you've set for yourself. And I might be showing my age here, but that almost sounds like a take on away messages from the AOL instant messenger days. And I am extremely ready for those to make a comeback. We've also heard that Apple might be gearing up to show off a new look for the iPhone lock screen, which would make sense if they're planning to push the concept of statuses or availability like we just talked about. That also dovetails pretty nicely with rumors that the iPhone 13 could embrace an Android style always on display, a feature that's only really possible now because Apple started using OLED screens and iPhones last year. Now, considering how vocal Apple is about its focus on privacy, I can't say I'm surprised that the company seems to be building on the app tracking transparency work that debuted in the recent iOS 14.5 release. For iOS 15, Apple has reportedly built a feature that shows users which apps are subtly collecting information about them, though at this point, it's not entirely clear how Apple is coming to those conclusions. We've also heard that Apple is planning to flesh out iMessage with more social features to help it compete with platforms like WhatsApp, but honestly, who knows if that's going to be ready in time for the update's fall launch. There is one thing we know for sure is coming to iOS 15, though. For whatever reason, Apple highlighted a handful of really interesting accessibility features way ahead of the show, including a feature that plays soothing background sound like rain, crashing waves, babbling brooks, and what Apple calls bright and dark noise. Now that might not sound like a big deal, and it might not be for some of you, but for people like me who get distracted very easily, this might be the single iOS 15 feature that gets the most use. Since iOS and iPadOS share the same basic feature set, you can expect just about every change we've talked about so far to apply to Apple's tablets too. With all of that in mind, we are expecting some big new changes this year, and that's mostly thanks to the new iPad Pro. Our review, along with basically every other one that's been published, has called on Apple to properly take advantage of the M1 chipset in the company's highest end tablets. And after all, this is the very same silicon found in Apple's current MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, and iMacs. There simply has to be a way for iPadOS to become a little more desktop-like without sacrificing the simplicity that makes the iPad as accessible as it is. Of course, that's a whole lot easier said than done. And for now, all we've heard about Apple's efforts on this front is that iPadOS 15 will get a revamped home screen that you can fully load up with widgets. Remember, iPadOS 14 only lets you place them in the little Today View sidebar. That report comes courtesy of Bloomberg's Mark Dorman, and it is about the only reasonably firm rumor we've heard about the new iPadOS, though we could make some justifiable leaps in logic. If full screen widget support is making the jump from iPhones to iPads, for example, we wouldn't be surprised at all if the iOS app library or something like it came to iPadOS too. That means you'd finally have a place to stick all of the apps that you do legitimately need but don't want to look at all the time, but that might just be wishful thinking on our part for now. But let's not forget about Apple's other computers. Last year's WWDC was a big one for Macs because we finally saw Apple ditch Intel in favor of its own surprisingly powerful chipsets. Since Apple is still dealing with the ramifications of that shift, it's very possible Apple might not have many dramatic changes to announce for Mac OS this year. 
Then again, it's also possible that Apple has just gotten a lot better at keeping secrets, but at this point that does seem pretty unlikely. Case in point, a string of rumors from John Prosser suggests we might get our first look at some new MacBook Pros running a new Apple Silicon chipset. If his reports hold up, we could be looking at a serious redesign. Think 14 and 16 inch models, no touch bars, and the reintroduction of long lost features like the MagSafe charger, SD card readers, and a proper HDMI output. That all might sound like Apple is planning a return to the good old days of laptop design, but let's be clear here, there is no shortage of modern touches. These MacBook Pros, for instance, are expected to use mini LED displays like the ones we saw in this year's iPad Pro. And if you missed our review, just know that it looks excellent. We should also note that these MacBooks will reportedly use Apple's next generation high performance chipset, allegedly called the M1X. Moving from Apple's biggest screens to its smallest, well, Look, we don't really know a whole lot about what's going into the new version of watchOS apart from what the company has already confirmed. For example, the next watchOS update, watchOS 8, will include a new feature called assistive touch that will allow people to control their Apple watches just by clenching their fists and making pinching motions with their fingertips. As a concept, that's pretty wild, but maybe not quite as wild as how the company actually pulled it off. The watch will use its motion sensors, its heart rate monitor, and a dash of machine learning to detect minute motions in your muscles. If the name wasn't already a giveaway, Assistive Touch is part of Apple's push for greater accessibility for its hardware. And this could be a very, very big deal for people who only have the use of one hand. But I wouldn't be surprised to see more traditionally able people trying it out too. I certainly will. The rest of the Watch 08 story remains a mystery, and the same is true of a lot of stuff about WWDC, but at the very least, we won't have to wait very long to get some answers. If you have any predictions or any feedback about our predictions, let us know down in the comments. And if you don't, we'll see you next week after the show to see how right or wrong we were about all of this.